Hi guys, welcome to another video by Antique Serena. My name is Walter Neal and today I'm going to show you another haul video. I've had some stunning pieces. Um, I'm going to mix it up today between a bit I bought in Besma and some bits I've had that have come in the shop. And I'm going to start off with my favourite piece of the day. I normally save them to the end, but I tell you what, stay tuned, find out exactly what it is. Okay, just quickly before we get going guys, if you love antiques, collectibles, you're in the reseller business, then don't forget to subscribe because my channel's all about how-to videos. I go out buying antiques and I show you what everything's worth and how to identify it. So state your claim guys, make sure you subscribe. If the videos help you and you like them, I would really appreciate a like and a share to help me keep creating videos. Let's get to it. Okay guys, so, my favourite piece, starting off with the, the best. Are you ready? There la. I don't know if it's off an old fire engine, an old fire station, or what, but uh, we have a massive, massive bell. <laughs> and loud. Sounds beautiful. Weighs a ton. Original clanger. It's got some numbers on the top. 9410. Really, really nice quality bell that does weigh a ton. Now, picked it up in Bessemer Sunday morning. And everybody was asking about it. And I walked up to the stall and everybody was asking and he was saying 70 quid, 70 quid and people were running away. So I turned around and said, oh, genuine offer, 50 quid. He came back 60, we done the dance, the usual thing, we ended up, I bought it for 55 pound. Now, it's got to be, I don't know, 30, 35 quid, 40 quid, a scrap, just in this bell. It is that heavy and big, it's beautiful. Um, I think I've already got it sold. I've got... Um, Gentleman coming in this morning, uh, which is why I started with this one, just in case he comes in when I'm film while I'm filming. Uh, and he's going to have the name of the pub engraved, and he's going to hang it above the bar as the last order's uh, bell. That's his idea, anyway. Big bell for that, but you know what? Oh, what a standout piece! So fifty-five pound, and I must admit, I absolutely love it. Um, we'll have a look on eBay now, see what types of money they pull. But um, I'll do another quick look at it before. It is massive. It's, you know, it's the type you'd see on the old 1930s or 40s films with a fire engine coming down the street ringing the big bell. That's the type it is. I'm not saying it's of that age, it might not be, but um, it's certainly a really, really quality, heavy item. Beautiful. And very heavy. So that's my first and my favourite. Then we're going to move on to a few pieces that come in yesterday uh, at the shop. I've got loads more from Bessemer to show you, but I'll put it in another film because I want to clear my workspace away. And I got stock all over it that came in yesterday. So I'm going to show you something now, and it's really nice and unusual. I know the blue and white Cornish way isn't that unusual, I know. But what's nice about this is I have the three different examples of the TG Green marks. This is TG Green Cornish way, blue and white banded, comes in a variety of colours. The blue tends to be the more common. But I have three sugar sifters. And each one has a different mark. This one here has a black shield. This one here has a green shield. And this one here has green and co in their uh, overmark. So, let's see if I can one glimpse, you can see them all together. There's three examples of the marks of TG Green. Now, which is the earliest? The middle one the green shield is the one that pulls the most money in the early one 
Then you're moving on to this one, and then the one on the end there. But three different examples of sugar sifters, all in lovely condition, really nice. Now I paid a five reach for these yesterday over the door. There's no damage to any of them. And they all have the uh, writing on and the sugar on them. So nice little group. Look at the difference in shapes as well. As you go through the ages from the 30s up, you can see the difference in the uh, shapes. You put one down, so I'm scared I can drop one. So, 1930s, maybe 1940s. Um, that's a flower one. <laughs> Just noticed that's a flower. Two sugar and one flower sifter. But um, I can't really compare those two now then, because that's not a sugar sifter. So let's compare this sugar sifter, which is probably 1950s, and that one, and see the difference. This one's got a th screw on thread. This one's just got a cork in the bottom. That in itself is a sign of quality, the difference in quality of the two. Um, slight variation in the colour. This one's a bit paler. But all in all, some really nice quality pieces. Now they only a five reach. That's absolutely fine. Um, I got no problems with that. What I'll probably do with these is I'll give them a really damn good clean. I might even soak them overnight in bleach water to make sure there's no staining on them. Like that bit in the bottom there, I'll get that out with a bit of bleach water. Not too strong, just a bit of hot water, a bit of bleach. Soak them overnight, bring them out, wash them in soapy water. But be careful what you do it too because it can destroy certain things. But these, these are all glazed and it's not going to do any damage. So that's what I'll do with those. But we'll have a little look now on eBay. Let's see some of the prices and I haven't looked yet but hopefully uh, we'll be able to see a comparison of prices depending on marks. So stay tuned for that one guys. Okay, next piece is a big lump and it's not the first time I've had one of these have you figured out what it is yet yes it's a till it's a nine, nice 1930s till I would say nice till top opens up as usual it's got the bell inside the roller is in pretty good condition to be totally honest it needs a bit of a clean little chip on the back there that I need to uh, stain over and just a good clean and a good wax now this owes me £15, I bought her in yesterday for £15 let me just hold this for a bit, sorry guys, there we go, that's better uh, you come in, as I say, 15 quid. I'm over the moon with it you know, I sold the last one, I think it was 30 35 this one is just as nice, if not a bit nicer so £30-35 again is going to be the going rate for that. But we will have a look on eBay. See what sort of money they pull in on eBay. Because um, you never know, things go up and down daily. So something that might be worth £30 yesterday might be worth 50 today. You never know. Always check. Never not check. You're going to have to excuse the noise, guys. They're doing work across the road and they're driving me absolutely nuts. Uh, they've been doing this since before Christmas. And this is every day I get this noise. Every single day, I'm sick and tired of it. I'll be glad when they finish doing the building. It's going to benefit the shop because it'll draw people in, but oh my god, it's all day, every day. It's jack armor, disc cutter, and so on. Um, they came in yesterday um, with a whole heap of crystal. I've got um, large tumblers, small tumblers and so on. Um, and I'll show you a couple of them now in a minute. But the one I want to show you are, is I wish they had a set. It was one of the nicest wine glasses goblets I have ever, ever had. It is beautifully engraved. Petal moulded around the base. The centre is beautifully cut with a faceted nope. Polished pontal, uh, little notched around the uh, edges there. 
Listen to this. That's real nice early crystal, 1930s crystal, 1940s, and the pattern is spectacular. It's by Web, Web Cobalt or early Web, and what a set! It, well, what a glass rather. If I had a set of them, I'm telling you now, I'd be asking 175, 200 pounds for a set of six of them. It is the best crystal goblet I think I've ever had. Um, as a single, I still think that's a 20 pound goblet or wine glass just for a single wine glass a stem like that that quality gotta be 20 quid however um it's going to my partner she likes a glass of wine and i'm gonna wrap that up and it's gonna be one of her gifts of the new baby so she can have a glass of wine in uh, style so it'll be a beautiful little gift for her a unique gift mother's day's coming down next week and i'll go in a little box beautifully wrapped with a little message of gracie bell but wow god you know what if they'd had a set of six of them, I would have been over the moon. I would have made my week. I probably wouldn't have sold them. <laughs> you know what I'm like. I struggle to sell things I really, really like. Um, we're going to move on. I'm not going to search the glass, guys. If you want, anybody wants to search glass patterns and makers, go to replacements.com. It's a company that specializes in finding single glasses if you broke one in your set or ceramics or glass or whatever. Brilliant set, they got all the crystal patterns on there. Right, next is a set of cutlery. We got a set of five forks with silver handles and steel forks. Okay, pretty plain, pretty boring. Then it pulls out the knives. And quite unusually, the knives have got a solid silver blade. You don't find that very often. Most of the blades are steel. So the entire knife here, bar for a bit of fill in here, is solid silver. I give £20 for that entire set. There's over 250 grams of silver there, minus the fill in of maybe 70 grams, 80 grams, and take off the steel. I'm still going to be up a good 60 quid of silver there if I want to just break it up and melt it down. 50 60 pound no problem at all um, and for 20 quid i'm really really pleased now i know it's what you're saying it's a shame to destroy them i swear to god i'll be using one of these now um, i know it's a shame to destroy these but some of the knives have got repairs on them some of the forks are a bit rusty um, and it's a set of five, not a set of six. Six, uh, it's five knives, five forks. So the saleability of this is, I'm gonna break these up and I'm gonna weigh them and put them in my melting pot. There's no other way to it. But a 20 pound investment for what's gonna return me about 100 to 150 grams of silver, if not a bit more, no problem whatsoever. I'm happy with that. Really, really pleased. That's good investment, guys. It'll work out something like 15, 20 pence a gram for the silver. Happy days for that. Next piece I had was a Royal Winton plate. It's not a plate. And ignore the price on there because they come in and half the stuff had prices on. Um, and I just put a job lot on the table and I give them a price for it. So this probably works out about three quid three or four quid. Um, it's Royal Wind then. Somebody obviously at some point had sold it for £35, but it's not a plate. If you see the hole there, this would have had a stand either on top or underneath. And it is a sandwich or cake stand. I'll probably put a base underneath it with a screw through the top and then you've got a beautiful Royal Wind and Cotswold pattern cake plate. Really nice, lovely condition. I can pick a, bit, uh, a stand up off the boot sale for a pound with a broken plate. Ain't gonna take me long to find one. That will go out for £35 when I get the stand with it. We'll have a look online, see if there's any on there. Probably on there for a fiver, but we'll have a look. Um, but yeah, that's a really nice uh, cake plate when I put it together and finish it. Just buying a bit of um, you know, project, if you like.
I'll give you an example. This lid come in. It was only a lid. They had eighteen pound on it, um, and I've sent them away. I kept the lid. I've sent them to find me the base, the coffee pot, uh, because what this is is eighteenth century Nanking porcelain, Chinese porcelain. If you take a look there at the arrows going around there, that's the Nanking border. Uh, so that is a late eighteenth century lid of a coffee pot. Now somebody at some point was asking eighteen pound for the coffee pot. I am sorry about the noise guys. It's either not film or put up with the noise and because they're all day every day. So at the moment you're just gonna have to put up with the noise. I am sorry. So as I was saying, uh, somebody whether they bought it years ago at 18 pounds for the coffee pot or what I don't know. I'm praying they find me the base. Because an 18th century Nanking coffee pot or teapot in good condition could be a couple of hundred pounds. But I've kept this because if nothing else, I got another example or fragment to go with my collection of Chinese porcelains for comparison of glaze, of well, of everything. So I chucked that in. I didn't pay nothing for it. It was just in with the job lot. So really, oh God, I'm praying. I've told them, mind. I said, if you bring me the coffee pot in or teapot and it's in lovely condition, I said, I'll give you 40, 50 quid for it. No problem at all. Uh, I, even though I got the lid, I said, I'll still buy that at the proper money. So... I'm praying they bring that in guys uh, and a couple of other pieces then little royal crown derby porcelain uh, jug uh, i had a selection of royal crown derby cups there's six of them in total And uh, in with the cups was uh, a bowl, a little sugar bowl. So this is fine porcelain. Really nice, fine porcelain, Royal Crown Derby. Um, trying to work out what that cost me. It probably owes me a fiver for those few bits. The cups, the jug and the bowl. So that's all right, I don't mind that. I had this off them which was a piece of Royal Winton. There's the uh, mark there. Beautiful piece. Now this is hand painted. It's got a flaw. They bloody chipped, they pulled it out the bag. Little chip by there, they done that. Now this is hand painted, not transferred. And if you look just by there, you can see the signature. So if you can just see it. Now all these flowers and that, it's all hand painted. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm gutted that it, they chipped it. But it was still such a beautiful piece, I wasn't gonna leave it go out the door into the rubbish. Uh, probably owes me three quid, working in the whole heap of it. But, oh, what a beautiful thing. If porcelain isn't your game, then you won't think much of it, but hand-painted porcelain, 1930s, Royal Winton, or 1940s, is beautiful. Then we got a nice piece, early piece, of uh, Fortnum, Fortnum and Mason Limited. Again, came with a price tag. Old price tags, very old. Uh, pattern number 1328. And we have a beautiful, hand-painted again, with a little bumblebee on the lid, preserve jar or honey jar. Look at that beautiful little thing. Now, I buy that even at the boot sale because that is really pretty. It's a usable antique. It's got the little bumblebee, but the little bumblebee on top. And um, yeah, that's a really nice piece again in lovely condition. And somebody could use that on the dinner table or put it in part of a collection. So it's another nice little item. Um, I'm, some of these bits I'm not going to search on eBay because the value is just too low. You know, the um, set of Derby cups I'll probably put out to three quid a cup type thing. The Derby bowl for maybe a tenner. Uh, I will search the Royal Winton, see if we can find anything signed on that. And I will search the cake stand. So. And we'll have a look at these, see if we can find anything on these guys. Um, before I finish off, how many is that? One, two, three, four, yeah. Before I finish off, 
Um, I'm going to show you a couple of glasses. I've spoken to a few dealers uh, that I know, uh, and I've basically said to them, I've promised to make a video on showing a selection of 18th century glass under ultraviolet light or UV light, black light, to show the difference in colour between the lead glass, the soda glass, of continental glass and so on. So I said, turn around and I said to him, look, on your travels, any Georgian glass you find that is damaged for a pound or two pound, pick up for me. I said I'm going to get a selection of about 20 or 30 glasses, put them in uh, order of date, lined up, and then I'm going to come across with a UV light and film them. So that's the project I've started. He came up to me yesterday. This is the first of the glasses that I bought. Now this is Rythand. You can see the Rythand. It's 18th century, about 1770. It has a snapped pontal mark, but it has also got a big chunk out there and a crack or little chip by there. Now it's almost a deceptive Rythand because it's very thick. It's not a, a thin Riven by any means, it's a deception Riven. Beautiful glass though. Uh, now's the first. I give him £2 for that one. But bear in mind, these are not going up for sale now. These are going to be collected for part of my uh, video. Then he turns around to me and says, I got this one. I picked it up, but he said, I think it's new. And I took one look at it before he even handed it to me. And I said, no, I can tell you exactly what it is. It's a custard cup or jelly cup from 1840. Uh, and it's beautiful all cut all this is all beautifully cut the handles drawn from the top and crimped on the bottom uh, polished pontal mark underneath this is a really beautiful glass again goes quite th uh, quite thick but uh, absolutely stunning again damaged it's got a chip uh, uh, somewhere right by there quite a big chip and a crack but there, can you see the crack? But again, another 170 years old, and it is still a beautiful, beautiful glass. Now, what I've decided to do, I'm going to put 20, 30, 40 quid into getting a whole heap of these glasses. And then, once I've made my film, I'm going to competition and I'm going to give them all away. So, if somebody then wants to learn 18th century glass, these are going to be amazing examples for you for comparison, for the weight of the glass, the feel, how it feels, how the pontons feel, how they're constructed. You can't do better than to have an 18th century glass in your hand and just feel the way the glass is made, feel that pontal mark underneath how it's finished off, everything. Look at the authentic way and the colour of the glass. Right. So. Once I've made that film, I'm going to give them all away. So if you're a glass collector, make sure you stay on the channel. Because it'll probably take a year to get a whole a heap of them made. And then I'm going to give it away in a massive competition. Guys, I'm going to leave it there. I really, really hope you've enjoyed the film. If you have, I would appreciate the like and the share. I'll say bye for now, guys. Thank you very much for watching.